We're going to talk about this more now with France 24's Philip Turl. Philip, first of all, tell us a bit more about Gabriel Attal and how he got the job. Right. Well, as you said, uh, he's young, he's dynamic, he's only 34 years old. It's the youngest French Prime Minister, appointed by the youngest <laughs> French president. So young is definitely the, 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 the name that has been bantered about over the last few hours. Uh, also, people are calling him a mini Macron because of the age and, and his background and the fact that he and Macron are going to be working together. He's also been called the clone of Macron by Humanité today, the French newspaper. But uh, most people seem to describe him as... The man in a hurry, l'homme passé, as they say in French, someone who says he hasn't got time to hang around, he's got so much on his agenda, he's got to get cracking on it straight away. So it's been a pretty rapid rise to success. He's only 34, as I said. He's already become Prime Minister of France. If you look back at five dates, he only went into politics in 2016 when he joined Emmanuel Macron's on Marx Party, got elected to the National Assembly. He became government spokesman in 2020, minister in charge of public accounts in 2022, education minister in 2023. He made a big impact uh, on the education sector, above all for banning the abaya, the uh, Muslim robe in schools, calling for the return of uniforms in France and equality between uh, different school pupils. That meant he'd got a big boost in his polling result. He's now the most popular uh, politician in France with a 40% approval rating, which is much better than that of Emmanuel Macron. So a lot to play for. I think that is probably the reason he was chosen to take over from Elizabeth Borne. Mm, certainly. So now we have to look forward. What are the biggest priorities he's going to have to be doing? Well, that's now? where it all turns a bit more difficult for uh, Gabriel Attal because there are many uh, different issues that he's going to have to grapple with, basically the same ones that uh, his predecessor, Elizabeth Bourne, had to deal with. Uh, here are three of the main ones, controlling inflation and the cost of living. Uh, that is priority number one for the French population. They say that spending power has gone down, inflation is too high, the government's got to try to get to grips with that. Second one is overseeing the European elections, uh, which are coming up uh, Later this year, bad news for the government there. 27% are uh, saying they're going to vote for Marine Le Pen in the European elections, uh, with only 19% saying they want, want to vote for a naissance Emmanuel Macron's group. Uh, so they're going to try to claw back some kind of popularity. The third one is security at the Olympic Games coming up this summer. Will there be a terrorist attack in France? That is something that is, I think making all politicians in this country extremely nervous because France will definitely be on show around the world. But they're not the only issues. There's also uh, the debate over immigration, over the uh, right to end one's life in France and also on education. That's something that uh, Gabriel Attal has said that he will continue to survey even though he's no longer education minister. And the real difficulty here for Macron, his party and Gabriel Attal is the fact that the party does not have an absolute majority now in the National Assembly. Is it going to change anything? Or is Gabriel Attal just basically the same as Elizabeth Bond, but just with a different look? Well, whatever way you look at it, and however much Emmanuel Macron tries to examine it with a magnifying glass, the news is not good. First of all, in the French, French National Assembly, if you look at this, uh, this graph here, uh, for uh, a majority, you need 289 seats. That's half of 577. The problem is the government only has 251 seats. So it has a relative majority compared to all the other parties, uh, which in total have 326, but they don't vote together, they don't see eye to eye, so therefore they don't pose a real threat to the government. The only problem is the government can't push through legislation, it doesn't have the majority to vote it through without support from opposition parties. And some opposition parties don't want to give that support. So Emmanuel Macron is a bit like a lame duck president because he's in charge, but therefore he can't pass the measures that he wants to pass. It's been a struggle up until now with the immigration bill, with the pension bill they've gone through, but not without protests and screaming rows in the National Assembly. So what he wants to do is to try to use the popularity of Gabriel Attal to increase his own popularity. But the problem is that the unpopularity of Emmanuel Macron might also rub off on Gabriel Attal. So we don't know which way that is going to go. And the other news is that uh, if there was an election today in France, for example, the French were told to go to the polls, uh, it would also be bad news for Emmanuel Macron. Only 19% would support him and 28% Marine Le Pen and the National Rally. So a lot of things for uh, Gabriel Attal to have to grapple with now he's Prime Minister. All right, Philip, thanks so much for that. That's Philip Turrell.